Hello, it's the ghost, and this is your preview to your weekend episode coming to you this Friday, July 26. I hope you guys can tune in and listen this weekend. The job I'll be sharing with you this weekend has to do with something that we don't hear about very often these days, even though we all know about it. Well, there could be some that don't somewhere out there, but even though we've heard about it, most people don't really consider it as something that is done or happening around us all that much today. But it is. Let me ask you this. When you think of passing and what happens after, what do you think of? And I'm talking about what do you do with the remains? A common choice, what I think most people think of and what I hear people talk about is the choice of a burial or a cremation, right? Have you made your choice? What do you think of those choices? Did you know that even cremation has choices? Unlike a traditional burial where there's the casket choice, cremation can be a little bit more than just picking out an urn or where you want to be spread. For instance, you could be a part of an aquatic reef in the ocean you can help restore a reef that needs it and attract fish and help create new life. You could be cremated and then shot into space. Well, part of you anyway. You could be freeze dried after cremation. You could be also preserved in a natural state and posed and used for educational purposes. That's happening. Or you could go with cryonics more heard of option and just hope that they get you back one day. I mean, the options are growing and there's one that's coming back. And that's the one that I'm going to be talking about. And that is mummification. Most of us have heard of King Ramses. Did you know he built his own tomb? We've heard of King Tut and then we think of Egyptians and we think of tombs and what else? We think of those wrapped up mummies placed inside of them. And even though you've probably heard of mummies, you might not know how it all works. So let me just give you a very quick and very small explanation of it all as it was, you know, back in those days. So first they would dry the body and they would remove what the body no longer needed, fill it with good smelling oils and salt. And when that's all done, they would just let the body sit. And this would, I mean, they'd let it sit for about 30 days or more. And then when that whole process was done, the body would get wrapped. And that's how we would find it. It would be inside a sarcophagus, which is the container that it's in. I know that the one King Tut was in is something very familiar to most of us. You know, something decorated on the outside to make it represent the person inside of it. The body would be all wrapped. And in the wrapping, there would even be little jewels and amulets. The purpose of all this back then was to allow them to live on into the future. Like Ramsey said about his tomb, he was building his eternal home where life would continue for him. Mummification is something that actually is coming back and really it never actually left us. I mean, there are people that have continued this process right into the modern day. The Pope, mummified, laid to rest in the tomb under the church. Movie stars are mummified just because, you know, they're cool like that. People mummify their pets and are signing up for their own mummification, just like you hear about people picking out their burial plot. A lot of years have passed between the days of King Tut and us. And between those days of old Egypt and today, Mummification has still been going on all around the world. Look at Rosalia, the child mummy in Sicily. We've mummified an outlaw from the old days, a politician in Russia. At any given time, it seems someone was getting wrapped and saved somewhere in the world. And for some, their beliefs weren't really that the person would go on and live yet another life in a forever world. They believed that it was simply a waste to let this person go when they had so much 
good fortune or good luck in the life they shared with us. They believed what was worth it about someone should have the chance to go on, if not for the individual who had passed, but for those left behind. Yep, we're back to greed. Greed in a different sense than we might usually think of it. But people wanted more. If it were you, they'd want more out of you, say. And even when you were gone, they still want what you had to offer this world. If you were lucky, if you were wealthy, if you were smart, they'd want it for themselves. The job I'm going to tell you about this weekend involves one of those people, a woman, a woman I'll refer to as Edie, who just couldn't let go. It was in her family already because they were part of the elite important people that just needed to stick around after their passing because they just should, they thought. It seemed like the right thing for them to do. They would live on into the future among those from the later generations. Their presence and the memories of them would remain close by. For Edie and certain members of her family and the generations that came before her, this was important. They had a special place for their family to go. They would not be left to turn to dust, either by cremation or burial. No, they would be saved to stay among the family. But as time passed and as we all moved on now into our modern day times, things with that family changed. Edie's family seemed to be almost against the idea, much to her surprise. It caused many family arguments and long lasting grudges. Some in her family were seeking more traditional ways of moving on for both personal reasons and religious reasons. And some were seeking out other options altogether, like the ones I mentioned earlier. I mean, why be mummified when you can be frozen and come back to even be more awesome later down the road? Well, Edie was against any of that. And for the members of her family who really helped keep things going, that helped keep and grow the wealth and maintain their family power and influence in their city, their country and the world. Well, they would not be going anywhere if Edie had her way. It was wrong and it was a waste. But again, times were changing and her family was changing. And like I said, they weren't really loving this idea anymore. They felt like wrapping people up and putting them in a locked up tomb wasn't really freeing anyone to go live on in some eternal life. Instead, they felt it would imprison the soul and only keep them locked up and keep them from moving on to anything. And once that idea took, started to stick, it only made her family more and more against the idea of mummification and preservation in the family tomb. But this did not work for Edie, who saw herself as some sort of family matriarch, and her opposing view on the whole thing was resulting in issues. And those issues led to a need, and that need led to a request put into my system for me to help take care of something, find something, and make things right. Right in her eyes, anyway. This week's adventure will take you on this job of meeting Edie and digging into her dilemma. Join me on this journey coming to you this Friday, July 26th. I really hope you can make it. Thank you for listening to the preview and I will talk to you all soon.